Hey grade 5, it's time to talk transformations. Now in math, a transformation is what we call it when we make a change to a shape. This can mean a whole lot of things. From sliding around, to growing, or shrinking. Now, at our level, we're mostly talking about simple movements around what we call the coordinate plane. Depending on what order you're watching these videos in, you might have already heard me talk about the coordinate plane in the double bar graphing video. You might have thought, what the heck is he talking about? For our purposes, right now in geometry, the coordinate plane is just a grid on which we can place objects and move them around. Let's, uh, let's take this to the chart. Here we see a grid with two perpendicular lines. This is our coordinate plane, and the place where those lines intersect is zero. Everything we do on the coordinate plane is in reference to this intersection. If we're moving on the left and right, we call left and right x. If we're moving up and down, we call up and down y. The third dimension we call z for forward and back, but that's not part of grade 5. We're working in 2D for now. Unless you start trying to make games in Unity or something, that's your business, then you need to worry about Z, because that's a 3D engine. When we move to the right, we say our X value gets higher. Here, X is 1. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, etc. When we move to the left, X gets lower. And we actually go into negative numbers. X is negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, and so on. The same goes for Y, except it gets higher as we move up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And lower as we move down. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Anywhere to the right of center, X is positive. Anywhere to the left, X is counted in negative numbers as you move further away from zero. And again, Y is the same way. Anywhere up is positive and down is negative. And going around the circle, you can see how this changes. X is positive, Y is positive. X is positive, Y is negative. X and Y are both negative. Let's fix that X. And X is negative, but Y is positive. In grade five, you're not supposed to worry about integers, negative numbers. So we're not going to. All you need to care about is this chunk in the top right, the positive quadrant of the coordinate plane. Now what about the transformations on that coordinate plane? Well, you might have heard the ones that we're going to talk about today referred to before as slides, flips, or turns. While those names still work, we have to try to be precise with our vocabulary in math. So today we're going to be calling them translations, rotations, and reflections. A translation is what we're calling a slide now. It's where you slide an object, left, right, up, or down, on the coordinate plane, sometimes more than one direction at a time. But you don't change its size or its orientation. A reflection is a flip. It's when you choose a line that's going to be your mirror line somewhere on the coordinate plane and flip across it, making a mirror image of the shape you started with. A rotation is where you choose a point somewhere on the coordinate plane and turn your shape around that point. Now just like giving instructions in a science experiment, if you're not exact with your directions, you can't be guaranteed the person you're giving instructions to will get the result you intend. So we're going to talk about how those instructions are going to look now. OK, for all three of our transformations, translations, reflections, and rotations, we need a shape that's a good example for it, something we can notice the difference in every time. For this one, I think a scalene triangle is going to work the best, one where all three sides are different lengths. So we've got one. Here's our scalene triangle. Let's start with translations. This is probably the simplest to do, but it also means we're going to be using the most new vocabulary. 
that x and y we just talked about. This is our example, a scalene triangle. When we translate a shape, we talk about making the x or y value higher or lower. When we move right, the value of x gets higher. If I count my red lines as my spaces, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 for x here. Let's go a couple more, actually. 7, 8, 9, 10. Doesn't hurt to count to 10. Now, looking at this, I have to look at each corner. If I'm going to move this corner three places to the right, I say I'm adding three to my x. One, two, three. My x has gone from four to five, six, seven. Each of my points needs to move three places to the right. Two, three. Got one here, one here, and this point. One, two, three. Ends up here. If I connect those three points, I've moved, whoop, that was a bad one. You get the idea. I've moved my triangle three spaces to the right. Let's undo that and try a new line there. Much better. You can see my triangles move three places to the right. If I actually move it three places to the right, it should overlap. Oop. Then we'll move the old one back, I suppose. That's a translation three right, or in math terms, x plus three. If I wanted to move my triangle three to the left, x minus three, I'd be taking away from x. So seven would turn into six, five, four. And the other points would all go along with it. This top point was at eight. Now it's at five. This point on the left was at five. Now it's at two. I can do the same thing moving up and down by increasing or decreasing my y. Let's draw them on here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. If I add one to each of my y points, this point is currently at two. So it's going to move up to three on the height. This point is at four. So it's going to move one up to five. This point is at seven. So it's going to move one up to eight. This time I'm just going to drag the triangle so you can see it will match if I move it up one place. I call that y plus one. If I want to move y down two, if I want to move my triangle down two places, well, that's down one, two. And we would call that y minus two. Now this is a lot of new vocabulary for just a few seconds of video, but it is pretty straightforward as long as you remember x is left and right, y is up and down. The coordinate plane is numbered for a reason. When you get used to this type of instructions, it's not really any more complicated than doing a connect the dots or building a Lego kit. One thing to take note of here is that when we say x and y values, we always say x first, then y. This is just a mathematical convention to help make things clear when we talk about the coordinate plane. Now reflecting is a little bit more complicated than just sliding a shape around, but it is very easy to do. The most important thing about all of this is that we need to specify the line we're reflecting across. We do this by naming the line based on what's constant about it. In this case, you can see I've drawn a line on the coordinate plane. This line could go forever up and down, but one thing will always be the same of it. When y is zero, when it's zero high, well, it's x is at seven. And one, 
when y is 1, its x is still 7. At 2, its x is 7. At 10, its x is 7. No matter how high or low this line goes, my x value for it will always be 7. For that reason, I can call this line x equals 7. Now to reflect across x equals 7, I'm going to start by marking the corners of the shape I want to reflect. I want to make sure that each of these corners is the same distance away from this line when I'm finished, but in the opposite direction. So let's take a look. This corner, which I'm going to label A, is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 spaces to the left of my reflection line. So I need my new A to be 5 to the right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. In math, we write the new one by saying A and then putting a little tick next to it to say it's new A, or A prime. This one, which I'll call B, is 1, 2 to the left, so it needs to be 1, 2 to the right. This is my new B. And down here, C is 1, 2, 3 to the left, so it needs to be 1, 2, 3 to the right. There's my new C. If I now connect these lines, like so, you can see I've made a mirror image of my scalene triangle across that horizontal line. It's a perfect flip, a perfect reflection of the shape I started with. Let's take a look across another uh, horizontal line this time. Now this line could go on forever to the left and right, but everywhere it goes, its y value is going to be 5. So I can call this line y equals 5. Now to flip across y equals 5, I still need to just take my three points, a, b, and c, and make sure they are the exact same distance from the line as they were when I started. Here, I've got my A two points above the line. So my new A, my A prime, needs to be two below. A prime. My B is one, two, three, four, five above. So it needs to be one, two, three, four, five below. B prime is right on this line. And my C is on the line. C doesn't need to move. If I move it zero away from the line, it's still going to be zero away from the line when I'm done. C prime is in the same spot. Now again, I just need to connect my dots. A to C, C to B, A to B. And again, I've got a perfect mirror image of my triangle, but now I flipped it vertically instead of horizontally across the line Y equals 5. This time we're talking rotation. Now this one is the trickiest of the three transformations that we talk about. It's still not actually super difficult to do, but it can be a lot to wrap your head around the first few times that you do it. This time we're going to turn a shape. And just like the reflection, the first thing we need to do is be specific about where we're turning it around. I do this by drawing the dot I want to use as the center of my turn, and then naming where it falls on the coordinate plane. This dot I've drawn is 6 units right, x6, and 3 units up, y3. So I name its x first and its y second. I'm going to call this point 6, 3, to say it's 6 to the right of my 0 and 3 up from it. Now I need to say how far I want to turn my shape. This is why we should have studied angles first, and did. 
if you're seeing this in 2020. We only work with increments of 90 degrees in grade 5, so my options are 90 degrees, 180 degrees, or 270 degrees of, of turn. And I can do this either clockwise or counterclockwise. For this example, we're going to do a 90 degrees clockwise turn about 0.63. Now what makes this trickier than a reflection is that points aren't just one direction away, the way they are from the lines in a reflection. Here, I can say point A, B, and C. Uh, B is up here, sorry. A, B, and C. And when I look at, for example, point C, I see it's two to the left and one down. So I need to tr uh, keep in mind two different directions at once when I'm doing this rotation. If you have the tools, I suggest making a spinner like this one. As I said, rotations can get a little bit tricky. So I actually made a little wheel to help me out with it. This is going to help me remember how things turn as they do. If you'd like to make your own, it's pretty simple. You need two circles of paper, a pen, and a pin. So follow along here. If I'm turning 90 degrees clockwise, I can turn this front wheel 90 degrees clockwise, a quarter turn that away. Looking at it, I see that now what was up before is on the right. What was left before is up. What was down is left, and what was right is down. This is why it's a little bit tricky to do rotations, because you have to keep track of the way that every direction changes as you do them. But if you have something like this, some kind of manipulative to help you out, it's not too hard to keep track of. Let's put this wheel to use. Now if you have a wheel like I do, you can use it to follow along on this next part. If not, I'll draw an example one for you. I've got up, down, right, and left. But if I turn 90 degrees, they move a quarter turn clockwise around the circle. So up is now here, right, down, and left. That's the way everything's going to be changing as we do this. Now, let's start with point C since it's the closest to our point of rotation. It is two to the left and one down of my rotation point, six, three. This means my new point, since left turns into up and down turns into left, should be two up and one left. There is our new C. A is one up and one, two, three, four left. Well, that one up is going to turn into one right. And that four left is going to turn into one, two, three, Four, up. I've got A prime over here. I'm going to quickly erase this line that I drew so that it's a little bit clearer to see for us. So I've got my new C and my new A. All I need now is my new B. B is one, two, three, four up and one left. Four up turns into four right. One, two, three, four. And four, one left turns into one up. Now I've got my new B. Make that line a little bit bigger. Once I've moved all of my points, the same way I did with a reflection, I just have to connect those dots and I've got my new shape. So let's connect A to C, A to B, 
and B to C. I just turned that triangle one quarter turn clockwise, 90 degrees clockwise, around 0.63. So again, to do this properly, you need to count how far from your point of rotation each corner of your old shape is and adjust those to the new directions you get when you do a turn. You can draw something on the side like I've done here, or you could make a wheel like I've done in the video earlier, whichever works best for you. As long as you can keep track of those changes in direction, you can turn a shape. And that's your three transformations. Now, if you're watching this for our assignment this week, we actually drop a lot of the X and Y stuff to keep it simple. That said, I wanted this video to be useful to you in the future when you do start using those terms as well. So I went into all of that detail to help out future you. You're welcome, future you. I know this can be a whole lot. So I've also broken out each individual type of transformation into its own video if you'd like to review it, just any one of them at a time. You can check the description in the bottom for links. That's it. Have a transformative week, grade five. Peace.